Did you know that we can extract water from air and it can be used for drinking? we all saw how Bengaluru and the capital of the country, Delhi, experienced and struggled with water crisis. Water tank costed almost a fortune for the people. The reason behind this is groundwater depletion and climate change. Did you know that all around the world, nearly 4 billion people struggled with a water crisis at least once in a month? What if the humankind runs out of water in the near future? And also, is there an alternative for this? Many companies in all around the world are finding an alternative to produce clean and hygienic water. And, and one being water from air. We, did you know that we can extract water from air and it can be used for drinking? So this company right now where I am standing, uh, which is called Uruvu, is extracting water from air. Let's see whether this will be an ultimate uh, alternative for the water crisis in the city. Joining with me, co-founder of Uruvu, Sapna Srivastav. Uh, hi, sir. Welcome. Yeah, Thank you for talking to India sure. today. So, so, tell me, what is Uruvu? What is the meaning of Uruvu and how did you come up sure, with sure. this name? Uh, so, me and one of my other co-founders, we were studying at NIT Calicut in Kerala. And Uruvu in Malala means source of water. Okay. So, hmm. you know, we chanced upon that word. We really liked it. Hmm. Uh, later, we came to know that in uh, Tamil, it also means a relationship. Okay. So you know, both the meanings, I think. Water and air relationship yes. kind of a thing. Nice. Uh, so, water from air. When did you get this concept? I heard something about your college days back right. then. Uh, please uh, let, let the audience sure. also sure. know about uh, So, in, back in 2012, me, I, we, were, we were in second year of college. And at that time, we were looking at, you know, we basically it was summer vacation. We didn't want to go back home and we thought we'll do some competitions or part-time uh, projects. And uh, there was this competition called Imagine the Future of Water and City. Okay. And it was a $20,000 student competition where they asked us to imagine newer solutions for making our cities more water sustainable. Hmm. So we uh, took the example of uh, city of Kochi and we started looking at what are the problems many of these cities face. And what we realized was that today, majority of India faces two problems. Yes. One is you don't have proper water infrastructure which means that you don't have a piped water supply going to many places and water quality is also a big issue. Hmm. So we started looking at you know how can we solve these issues and groundwater is a big source of water today. Yeah. Uh, more than 80% of India's drinking water comes from groundwater. Hmm. Uh, but because of that uh, it has been depleting really fast and we are going to a point where uh, in many places we already exceeded the point where we are withdrawing more than we are recharging. Hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it's a tipping point. Hmm. Uh, so we uh, there were many solutions we thought of and water from air also is one thing we proposed because I am a big uh, Star Wars fan okay. and in the Star Wars universe uh, you have this air to water device mm. and we thought you know okay what's the most futuristic thing you can do this is what it is right? okay. uh, so that's how we you know came upon that idea we proposed it uh, had some preliminary thoughts on how this could work uh, but then uh, it remained as a project we didn't look further into it uh, but uh, fast forward to 2016, uh, we were in final semester of our college. That time I was also working on my thesis on wastewater treatment and recovery. And our campus actually ran out of water. Okay. So, uh, Kodi Kodi is a place where it actually rains a lot. Hmm. Uh, but then our campus is 25 kilometers from the city, so there is no high water supply, like from municipality. Okay. There is only a very small nearby river which used to supply water. And uh, college authorities have set up a water treatment plant to filter it and then take the water. And uh, Kerala's uh, soil is also that, like that, that you can't store a lot of groundwater. Oh. So it's very hard that, you know, all this rainwater gets stored. Oh. It's very hard. Uh, so oh. all the landscape, landscape yeah. is like mm -hmm. soil is like yeah. that. So when the river dried up, there was no water. So they used to call these water tankers. Mm. And we remember, I think it's uh, you know, April of May and uh, like almost for three to four weeks, we had just had to go down to uh, uh, the you know uh, gate of our hostels with the buckets oh. and take this one two uh, buckets of water every day. So that's how we lived. So then this idea came back to us. Then we thought you know let's give it a try. So just out of more like a curiosity and passion, we started mm -hmm. working on it, see where it goes, and that's how we you know, stumbled upon. Where did you get the funds from? Uh, back in the colleges, how did you get the uh, funds? So initially we Funny. just put 
some money ourselves oh, okay. to build the very you know, a few basic prototypes. Uh, some of my friends, relatives also help you know, just mm. put in the initial five ten lakh rupees oh. so that we can build some prototypes. Uh, then what happened in uh, 2018 was uh, there was a competition called Water Abundance X Prize. Mm. So X Prize is a Los Angeles based foundation okay. where they do a lot of these multi million dollar competitions on different themes. Mm -hmm. uh, coincidentally, in 2018, they launched a competition to make water from air using renewable energy. Okay. So okay. exact same thing what you're trying to build, uh, they launched a competition and it was a $1.5 million prize. Oh. So, mm -hmm. you know, huge amounts of yes. money which can motivate many people. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, we thought, because by that time we had already developed some prototypes mm -hmm. uh, based on solar and uh, initially we were using silica gel as a material. Uh, so we had built some prototypes, so we thought we will participate and out of 98 teams, we were the top 5 global finalists. Oh, okay. So that got us $50,000 oh, okay. back in 2018 uh, when we were just like 2 years you know, out from college, uh, 23, 24 years old. So that's when we got the, I would say the confidence that probably you know we can build this into a company and there is probably some uh, you know, confidence we are getting from market side that this could be useful. Yes. That's how we got the initial point. Yes, uh, we know that Urvu is using only renewable uh, sources here to produce right. water from right. Uh, right. air. Uh, can you explain us more? How, what is the procedure sure. and how this how it works? Sure, sure. Uh, so, water from air as a concept has been there for you know many like years. Twenty thirty years. Yeah. And most of the technology, I would say ninety nine percent of the technology in this space revolves around condensing the air. Yeah. Which mm. is very similar to an air conditioner. Correct. Mm. Even if your air conditioner if you run for many hours, you see some water. Yes, water. Products. Yes, uh, but then that process is actually consumes a lot of power mm. and it's not really sustainable in the long run because you're, you're again using compressors, refrigerants and uh, they also reject a lot of heat in the process because mm. you're cooling one side and then rejecting a lot of heat. Okay. Uh, and what all these companies have were not able to do also was bring the cost of water really down through okay. this process mm. because energy consumption is so high and it's outdated technology in the sense that it was developed 100 years back. And now you have reached a point where you can't actually further do something even from a physics side. Okay. So you have to, if you have to really bring the cost to like one rupee or below. Hmm. So that's where we saw the gap that you know this wouldn't work. So what we do at Urubu is uh, we rely on using something called as desiccants. Okay. So desiccants are materials which readily absorb moisture from there. Hmm. Uh, one very common example is uh, when you buy a footwear or electronics, you see a small pouch of silica gel. Huh, yeah. So silica huh. gel and similar materials, what they do is they absorb moisture from mm. there and keep the air around it dry. Okay. So we started with some silica gel kind of material, we experimented with many others. Now we are using a salt solution of calcium chloride. Okay. Mm. So this material also has very similar properties, you know you let it interact with air and it will absorb moisture. Mm. So say you have uh, 1 liter of this solution, over time it will become 1.2 to 1.3 liters. That means the extra 20-30% is the water vapor which is absorbed from there. Mm. Oh. And once that process is done, then what we do is we apply heat energy at 60 to 65 degrees Celsius mm. to release all the water vapor which was absorbed in a steam-like form and just condense it as pure ultra pure water. Oh. Uh, now, how we are different in this space is also that uh, we are able to design a system where we can plug this into any new source. Mm. So you can use, say, a solar heat. Okay. One example. Huh. Uh, you can use waste heat from industries. So a lot of industries produce uh, waste heat while manufacturing or mm. burning things. Mm. So a lot of that heat is there which is just rejected and not used. So we can tap into that. And we can even convert electricity to heat mm. using a device called a heat pump. Okay. So we are able to you know do a lot of these uh, innovations on process side uh, to really make it affordable plus also scale it to a point where it starts making useful applications. Mm. So today our facility can produce 4000 liters per day. Okay. And just two years back we were at 200 liters per day. So you know, we have scaled it yeah, up. Yeah, really huge margin is there. Uh, also, how much is the, wh how much does one bottle of water of uh, Uruvu cost for a person? Sure. Uh, so roughly what happens is like our cost of water today is like 3 to 4 rupees per liter. Mm. Uh, which is again depending on energy cost and a few other things. Uh, it can be, and our roadmap is to actually bring it to below 1 rupee per liter oh. in the you know, mm. next few years, mm. both with scale and technology improvements. And today, what we found was like there were certain applications, uh, while water is something you can use everywhere, yeah. like you can use for drinking in industries, 
uh, for beverages. Yeah. So beverages and drinking water was one segment where we found more uptake. Hmm. And uh, what we are doing today is we are bottling this uh, in glass packaging okay. and selling it to a lot of restaurants and hotels. How is the response for this? Uh, so response I can give you through numbers. Hmm. So we have already have 45 plus customers uh, in this last 10 months. Hmm. You know, we onboarded one. Uh, the Leela Hotel first, okay. and then we got you know, many of the customers. Uh, Leela Hotel has two uh, properties in Bangalore, both of them are being served by us today. So, out of 12 properties in India, two are being served by us. Uh, we have hired uh, Royal Orchid, Citrus, many other top you know, restaurants in Bangalore, Big Blue Ski, Box Bar, Great. Company. So, a lot of these customers have joined us. And uh, what we are also able to show is that there is a lot of impact which is happening. Hmm. So till till date we have sent uh, sold more than 5.5 lakh bottles. Okay. And in the process we have saved almost eight eight lakh liters of groundwater. Hmm. Now eight how we bottles. are able to do that is because traditionally if there is a bottling plant like this, they will use groundwater yeah. and they'll use reverse osmosis. Hmm. And in the process a lot of water gets wasted. Whereas in our process there's no water even being used in the first place. Yeah. And there's no wastage in the process. Hmm. So you get this very high quality ultra pure water. And both from a customer adoption side and from impact side, we have shown you know a lot of progress in just ten months. Okay, so you extract water from air. There is H uh, also. There are other uh, what do you say nitrogen, oxygen, right. hydrogen, right. all other elements in the yes. air. So what do you do with those things and how it gets cancellated like nitrogen and okay. everything? Can That's you? a great question. Yeah. Uh, so what usually happens is desiccants are materials which you can fine tune for absorbing particular gases. Okay. So you can use different materials to absorb different kind of gases. The materials we use absorb only pure water. Oh. So you know all other uh, mm. NO2, sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, these are kind of gases which don't get absorbed. Oh. Only pure water vapor gets absorbed. Mm. And when you heat it up also only pure water vapor gets released. Mm. So that's why you get this very high quality ultra pure water. Is there any side effects of uh, this and uh, uh, people also, oh, if you are observing all the water and all the oxygen mm. from the air, there is other doubt. What about the air? What if sure. that get polluted? All those questions comes to sure, sure. one's Definitely. mind. So. Uh, so one way to look at it is that if I give you context of uh, overall water in the air. So air has six times more water in all the world's rivers combined. Okay. So mm. you take Ganga, Brahmaputra, Nile, Amazon, all these rivers, water combined into six times. Six times, is what yeah. what we have in the air at mm. this point. And it's the best good. part is, uh, just in 8 to 10 days, all this water vapor replenishes naturally. Mm. So there is constant evaporation happening through you know surface bodies. Even plants are transpiring water, right? In the yeah. process of yeah. 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 Mm. water. So there is a, you can say there is an atmospheric river mm. all around us, yeah. you know, which currently we are not tapping into. And uh, just to give you, like, say, context of Bangalore. Mm. So Bangalore is around uh, 700 square kilometers. And uh, you can use up to 100 meters of air column above it to oh. say extract water. Mm. So at any given point, Bangalore has 2 billion liters of water. Okay. And mm. Bangalore's daily water consumption is 1.4 billion liters. Okay. So you have more water. Mm. And I'm not going to use all of that water. Mm. It's not that I'm going to set up a plant where I'm withdrawing all that water. Yeah. I'm going to use it for applications like say, you know, drinking, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics. So in a city like Bangalore, maybe, you know, like I'll touch maybe 1 million liters per day. But there is 2 billion liters. Mm. So if you look at percentage wise, it's, you know, even less than a percent. Yeah. So uh, that is one. And then because it replenishes so fast, mm. whereas uh, if you look groundwater, mm. which is, you know, widely used, more than 50% of a Bangalore's requirements came from groundwater. Yeah. Groundwater takes 1400 years to replenish naturally. Okay. So we are talking about 8 to 10 days versus 1400 years. Yeah. So when people are pumping out groundwater, no one is asking, you know, mm -hmm. why you are pumping out groundwater and it's going to take like 1400 years. But then someone is doing for air, which is a 8 to 10 days. Yeah. So it's a renewable source. Yes. Yeah. Now we all know that how uh, Bengaluru and Delhi has, was facing yeah. a, a water crisis in during yeah. summer. Do you th think uh, labs like Uruvu might yeah. help this water crisis in the future? Sure, definitely, because that has always been, uh, you know, like our vision overall. Okay, how do you build uh, the kind of water infrastructure needed to solve a lot of these problems right from how you source water to how you distribute it. Because today what happens is, say for example, Bangalore is getting water from Kaveri River, mm. which is coming from 200 kilometers away. Yeah. So you are pumping water all the way. Whereas uh, with a solution like ours, you can make water and use it at point of use, so on-site. Mm. 
they don't give transport or even if you're transporting it it's like in a 5 to 50 kilometer radius mm-hmm. very less so i think in one way our aim has always been to make sure you have an alternative yes whether and it's not going to be like okay this solution solves the whole water crisis mm-hmm. but you need like a combination of solutions mm-hmm. what i meant by that is like say today we are not solving water crisis directly but because we are saving all the groundwater that means all the groundwater is left for other purposes mm-hmm. So say uh, yes, in a round of factory, there are families, communities. If a factory like this was for some other bottling company, they would have extracted a lot of groundwater. But we are not doing that. So all that water is now preserved for community use. Hmm. So the idea is that there are certain applications which can move 100% to this technology, be it pharmaceuticals, uh, cosmetics, beverages, and then you can save a lot of water for other, other purpose. People. Yes, makes sense. And also uh, when you know, people wa- if people want to switch to something like this, yeah. there's always a trust issue that exactly. comes into yes. uh, matter. What is your take on that? Sure. There is uh, like, uh, if some if they have to if if a person have to switch from their normal routine to something new, there's yeah. always a fear of doubt. Yeah. What are the, yeah. what will be the situation sure. and all those things? How do you uh, what is your take on sure. such? So that? definitely, I think uh, one way what uh, initially also we faced was. Uh, one is definitely no one wants to trust technology mm. like this in a way that it's new. Yeah. So uh, it's not something you know we are looking at day to day, or it has been even made a success in some other country, and now we are just adopting. Yeah. It, right. It's all na- very nascent all around the globe. Uh, but when you are pioneering something like this, you also take the stand to probably educate and you know, make it more aware. Mm. So one way what we were trying to do initially also was that we were looking at some of these applications where there is some consumer angle, hmm. uh, so which we found in the hospitality and beverage sector. Uh, and there how we are convincing is like through our water quality, through test, which where we show that you know, these are the parameters we are testing. We have an in-house lab, we send our water to third party labs every week for testing. Uh, when we onboarded uh, customers like Nila Hotel, they have a very strong operating procedure. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. right from these are the quality checks, they have like 48 points in the checklist which mm-hmm. we have to maintain. Yes. Then we got all the required licenses, you need to operate a facility like that. So in that way, in a way only your source is changing, but the quality is still, uh, yes. I, I would say even much better. Oh, okay. Way better than your groundwater or other things, mm-hmm. right? So that was definitely one way to, you know, make sure there's trust. Mm-hmm. Other ways also how people have started using it mm-hmm. in all these restaurants and you know how many bottles we have already sold. Yeah. So that's also a testament to that okay, you know, market is accepting it. Yes. And yes. I think that's only gonna grow mm-hmm. and then the more it grows, the you know, better trust could be done. Yes. I I wish you all the best for